Megami is back in the story and not only is he back but he is helping Yuji fight Sukuna inside of Yuji's domain expansion. But we actually got to see Yuji fight Sukuna within his own domain expansion and probably one of the most heartfelt touching chapters in such a long time, especially the one-to-one -one between Megami and Yuji, how Yuji actually gave Megami more hope to fight and live. It was just such a beautiful chapter, it was so crazy, especially the insane reveal at the end that there is a finger still out there. Yes, there is one more Sukuna finger left tied somewhere. We don't know what it is, we don't know where it is. There's a lot of theories revolving that, so let's just get right into this. Be sure to leave a like on the video, it helps out a ton, thank you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of depression just like this. Trust me, if you love JJK, I promise you, you won't get subscribed to this channel. And of course, thank you to the special crew members of the channel, it's always much appreciated, and Atom Zor de Maya Dorogaya. Alright, so this chapter actually starts off with Yuji talking to Megumi, and I'm not gonna lie, especially with everything going on in my life, this chapter has hit really hard, and I've never felt more connected to anything that was ever said in a JJK chapter. Megumi's talking to Yuji and Megami says that he wanted to create a world where Tsumiki wouldn't have to face the unfairness of the current world. He says that even if I couldn't create such a world, I wanted to at least maintain that fragile life at least while I was alive and she was in my sight. Megami continues to explain his dream world, eating meals that were made out of habits, watching the sunlit laundry, watching side by side with a person like Yui Tadori, and seeing off Tsumiki. I wanted to think, ah, I'm so happy. Megami tries to end the combo by saying it's okay now, but Yuji explains that he eventually came to understand the choices of people who has to face the harsh, unavoidable realities and that's why. And don't worry this chapter does get crazy with a lot of insane fights, domain expansion, even a crazy reveal of another finger so I'll get to that but first I need to get through this because I genuinely think it's really heartfelt, touching and just great writing. Yuji continues to say that my grandpa's illness targeted lung cancer but pretty early on he rejected the harsh treatments with strong side effects. My body was built tougher so I never understood the decision of people to refuse the treatment of the idea of enthusiasia that I heard about sometimes. It just felt like something that was someone else's problem. I thought I could endure it but it must be painful for the person going through it. But after coming to Jujutsu High and experiencing the worst things imaginable, I started to understand the choices that people like my grandpa made. The choices of people who had to face the harsh, unavoidable realities and I've been faced with this choice many times as well, especially with the loss of so many people. Even when my best friend died, I had to accept the harshness of reality and the fact that he was gone and that there was nothing I could do about it. But even after all that in my life, I'm still someone who, really similar to Yuji, I just don't accept the harshness of reality. I refuse to accept the cruelness of it, to just go down without a fight even if there's a 0.1% chance that something might succeed and I won't share anything private but one of the most tragic and unfair things in my life happened two days ago but no matter what I refuse to accept it and I'm still trying my best even if it takes months or years I will try my best to face the harshness and unavoidable reality and make that reality avoidable. In that way I'm the most stubborn person you've ever met and I promise you I will never give up until that chance becomes zero. As hopeless as it may seem, I'll wait. Okay enough about me and back to the chapter. Yuji said Says that's why he can't tell Megami to live right now. Yuji's basically saying that he understands how depressed Megami is right now and Yuji can't get himself to tell Megami to live. And here we go, back to the fight, you know, Sukuna uses Hollow Wicked to counter, Sukuna even says it's too risky to reset his burnt out curse technique by using reverse curse technique since his brain is still damaged by Gojo's domain, which is something he does take that risk later on in the chapter. Yes, yeah, so Yuji's hometown and everything in here, inside of this is all the domain, so it seems like when Sukuna activates Hollow Wicker Basket that transforms him back into his true state, and of course just like with Yuta he needs to maintain it with two of his hands, so Sukuna is basically fighting with two hands, and then Sukuna and Yuji go for a 1v1. It's pretty cool, you know, they're landing blows, it's a really cool fight. And Sukuna says he's shocked and surprised at how angry he got when he's looked down upon. And he says, To show your pity to me, I can't wait to make every human other than you atone for what you've done. And then you see Megami and Yuji looking at each other, and Megami's a kid, and Yuji is in the exact same place he was when Gojo met him as a kid. And kid Megami says, What's with that face? And Yuji, just like me, unfortunately, he says, Well, I'll be sad about you. And the next instant, Sukuna's leg gets synced into the shadow. Megami is fighting back, which I did talk about in a very recent video how this fight was going to be a generational 2v1 and Megami is going to step in. This is the beginning of that and I do think Megami is going to start fighting back more and more. Sukuna says Megami's soul had been spewed back to life with the brat's dismantles and he also says that Maharaga and the Ten Shadows has already lost its function. Though it seems like at least the basic function of the Ten Shadows, which is to summon the shadows itself and control shadows, that's still there, but it seems like at least the Shikigami, maybe that's what Sukuna is referring to, is the thing that's gone. And Yuji punches Sukuna in the face and he smiles as he realizes Megami is back. That's right. Smile that smile, Yuji. And then they just start landing blows and blows. I mean, they literally just land a countless number of relentless blows at each other's head and Sukuna is the one who's pushed back. And Sukuna says, my reverse curse technique is pointless against the brat strikes. Hollow Wicker Basket is going to break. Which, yes, Sukuna can heal soul damage, but the whole point of Yuji's attacks is that he is messing with the borders between Yuji and Megami's soul and he's actually shaking it so much that Sukuna isn't able to perceive his soul as well and he's not able to heal it as well, which is 
explained during the Maki fight, so this is specifically the only type of soul damage that he can't heal. Normally Sukuna can, but this particular one, you can't heal even if you can heal your soul. At least if you have another incarnated sorcerer within you. If you don't have an incarnated sorcerer, I imagine the soul damage is something you can heal if you are able to heal soul damage and if you are able to perceive the outlines of your soul. But instantly, Slash has come flying out towards Yuji and Yuji's curse tool which is on his hand breaks at least one of them. So yes, it's finally confirmed. It's a curse tool, not a curse technique, not a blood manipulation technique that was on Yuji's hand. Sukuna used Gojo's technique of resetting burnout curse technique by destroying your brain to get his technique back and Sukuna begins to activate his domain expansion. And the chapter ends and here's the craziest part with us seeing one of Sukuna's fingers being tied up in a mysterious place and there are so many questions in regards to this finger and why is there another Sukuna finger? Where did it come from? I mean, is what we're seeing right now the finger inside of Yuji? Because do remember that there was a finger sealed inside of Yuji to make him stronger as a host and all of us did say and we all assumed that this finger was released by Kenjaku when he broke the seal during Shibuya and when Sukuna transferred his body to Megami, he actually took that finger with him to Megami's body but that was just an assumption we made. I guess it could always be possible that this is still the finger that was given to Yuji at birth and that was sealed inside of Yuji and the only reason we're able to see it now is perhaps because this is what we're witnessing from inside of Yuji's own domain expansion since a domain expansion is a reflection of your soul, your inner domain. Maybe that's why we actually get to see a Sukuna finger inside of it and maybe Yuji's going to consume the finger to gain more power, maybe Sukuna's going to find a way to consume that finger himself because we know it's not that final finger because do remember Gojo did have that finger for a fact as we know that Yuta ate that finger to get Sukuna's technique. Unless it's possible that Yuta got Sukuna's technique via a different method and he didn't eat the finger and there was a roundabout method that he got the technique copied. Even though it was said by Yuta that he got the technique by eating the last Sukuna finger, it could always be possible that Yuta was lying to him but I really doubt this, I just don't see why that would be the case unless they really wanted to be very crafty and just completely throw Sukuna off and make him not be aware of that final finger by making Sukuna think, oh Yuta ate that finger so it's not going to pop out anywhere else. Of course it's just a lie, Yuta got the technique via a different method and the finger itself, maybe Yuji still has it or maybe it's within somebody else and we'll see something in regards to that finger soon. As for the whole section of Megami in this chapter, I genuinely thought it was beautiful. Again, for me, it was really hard to read, especially considering everything going on in my life, but I won't get into that now. I already spoke about that, but it does hit pretty close to home. And in this way, I relate more to Yuji, where no matter how hard it is, no matter how harsh it is, genuinely, even the most painful things that even want to make you give up on life or just end it, you just endure it, you don't break, you don't collapse, and you move on. But I do truly understand people like Megami, as I've been in that position myself many times in my life, where you face the harshness, unavoidabilities of reality and you just break, you collapse, you just give up. I've been there, I truly do understand why he reacts that way but in the cases where someone is truly gone and there's no chance, in that scenario you truly just have to accept that reality. But of course if there's a chance, even a 0.1% chance, you always try no matter what and that's what Yuji's doing with Megami. He never once accepted that Megami's gone, even when Megami rejected him inside of Yuta's domain, Yuji himself never gave up on Megami until finally he was able to get Megami back and convince him. Yuji truly is built different and I hope I can do the same in my life. Paka paka Dillyman. Let me know your thoughts on all this in the comments down below, especially all the theories in regards to the last finger at the end of the chapter. I really want to know about that. You can let me know and if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, it helps out a ton. Thank you. And of course, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for a ton of consistent and quality depression just like this. Like I said in the intro, less than 10% of people who watch my channel are subscribed. So if you love JJK, I assure you, you won't get subscribing. And of course, thank you to all the channel members as well. It's always much appreciated guys. But that's all from me. Have a great day and take care. Maya Dorogaya.